Hi, it's Karen of the Cool Tool Studio. I'm here today to show you how you can use fine line black underglaze underneath enamel to add contrast to your enamel pieces. Here's what you're going to need for this technique. I have some fine line black underglaze and Cool Tool sells that both as a pre-mixed liquid or as a powder and squeegee oil that you mix yourself. Either will work for this technique. A spray bottle, some surfactant, clarifier, a transparent enamel, I'm going to be working with wax yellow, a sifter, a tile, a sponge brush, and a palette knife, a medium scotch bright, and some textured metal. I've prepped this metal just like I would for any other enameling project by applying a counter enamel to the back and then cleaning the front surface with surfactant and a scotch bright. So now we're ready to apply our fine line black. As I said earlier, you can use either the powder and the squeegee oil that you have to mix yourself, or the pre-mixed. This you'll use straight out of the container, so I'm going to show you how to mix the powder with the squeegee oil. I like to start off with my dry, and picking some up with my palette knife. And then the squeegee oil comes with a little dropper in the lid, and that's super convenient. I'm just going to add a couple drops. You can always add more. When you're mixing it, you're looking for a, not watery, but obviously this is a paste right now. Um, so we're definitely going to need more squeegee oil. You're looking for kind of a paint, like an acrylic paint consistency. And you want it to be opaque, so you don't want to use so much squeegee oil that it's kind of transparent. So I'm just using the palette knife to kind of go back and forth and evenly integrate the powder with the oil. This is still looking a little thick to me. So I'm going to add just one more drop. You can kind of hear the grit to it. So I need to mix it some more. All right, that's looking good. See how it's kind of, see how it's kind of like the consistency of an acrylic paint. So now I'm ready to go. I'm going to slide this off to the side and get some paper to work on so I don't make a mess. So now I'm ready to use my sponge brush to pick up the underglaze and then sponge it onto the surface of my metal. And you can use a brush for this, but I find that this is the easiest way to get a nice even coat. When you're applying this, you want to make sure that you don't put it on super thick. Otherwise, when you go to remove it, it'll kind of come off in flakes. So you don't want to be able to see through it, but you don't want it to be like its own thick layer. Once you have a nice even coat, you're going to allow this to dry. You'll know it's dry when it's no longer shiny and it looks opaque. I'm going to add some fine line black to this texture as well. So the finish on the fine line black is now nice and matte, so I know I'm ready to remove it. I've got my medium scotch right here, and I'm going to work it kind of as you do if you're removing a patina in a circular motion. And I'm applying a little bit of downward pressure, but I'm not pressing super hard, otherwise you will remove the black from the low areas. So see how quickly this cleans up? I'm just going to keep working my way around the piece until the black has been removed from all the high areas. So I'm just about finished up here. and. This kind of comes down to preference. You can remove even more and have a really subtle look if you'd like, or you can leave a good amount in there and have some more contrast. I just kind of tap it to get rid of the extra dust, 
And now we're ready to apply our enamel. So now I'm ready to apply my enamel. I'm going to be working with waxed yellow, and I picked that color because it looks really good directly on copper. So I'm going to start off with some clear fire mixed 50-50 with water. And now I'm going to load up my sifter. I'm just going to apply a nice even coat. And you want to apply it thick enough that you can no longer see the pattern underneath the enamel. It's a good indicator that you have a good coat. Make sure you come out to your edges. All right, so this is ready to dry and then fire. I like to fire these pieces really hot because it helps the transparent enamel on top of the copper become really shiny and kind of gem-like. So I'm gonna be firing this piece at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. So here are my two finished samples. I really like the way that the fine line black in the low areas kind of adds a rustic look to these pieces. I have some other samples that I did as well. This was a different textured metal pattern that we sell that's a little bit deeper and a more high relief. And that you can see kind of has a more high contrast to the way that it looks. You can also use this technique on textured metal clay pieces. I hope you've enjoyed this video and give this technique a try. It's a really fun way to help make textures pop in your enamel pieces. Thanks for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.